Welcome back to The Sims 2. I, I think Daddy Big Bucks is lost. Like, he, he doesn't know where he is. Anyways, now that we've completed the tutorial, we now are here on the main screen. So we can view the ratings from the previous show, change your clothes, save the game, and then the interesting stuff, plot twists and skill moves. In plot twists, you can pay the studio with ratings for new episodes. Makes sense to me. You can also choose between three variations of your home, and a chopper made by Dusty Hog apparently. It's gonna break down after a couple seconds, isn't it? And we can unlock skill moves to use during social in interactions. So for friendly interactions, you can hug people. Maybe a bit too much, but hey, a hug is nice. And then you've got brag. D brag. How is that gonna make friends? You're just gonna come off as a douchebag. And the last one is apologize. F for what exactly? I don't know. Maybe bragging too much? Like, imagine making friends with someone for just randomly apologizing for nothing at all. On the romantic side, you can blow a kiss or plant a kiss outright. I hope they can center this first. This is just a way to get arrested. And you can show off your body. Because that's how you get a girlfriend. Just flex on them and then you have sex. It, it works every time. But of course, the most important ones are the intimidating ones. The first one is threaten. That is literally a crime. Then rude gesture. I, I don't know about you, but I think threatening someone is a little more intimidating than doing a rude gesture. But somehow that one is more expensive. And the last one is showing off that you know karate. I mean, I, I guess that one kind of makes sense. And off we go to the next episode. Here we have about three seasons of about three or four episodes each. This show did not do too well, did it? If this is all the episodes that they have. Like, this show must be like a hidden gem. I bet the box set costs like a ton of money. But our first episode is Buried by the Mob. Good pick of scripts, prick. Why are you always so mad? Like, stop slamming the table. You're complimenting me, I think. The, the prick thing kind of falls it off guard, but yeah. And apparently Daddy Big Bucks used to be friends with Frankie Fusili, the, the mob leader. But after turning on him, his way of getting him back is to put him on television? Y yeah, that'll show him. You betray my trust, you get a wall on Emmerdale. So here we have the intro. This must be the goth family. I mean, it was nice of them to include them into the intro. They must be thrilled about that. So, Strange Town is the show's name, and starring Tank Grunt, apparently. I guess World Warrior Hawk is the main character. Oh, and Dusty Hog and this other lady, who are also here, but for whatever reason, they don't get named. Then we have Emperor Zizzle. Great name. Also giving away the alien episode that happens later, like, spoiler alert. Frankie Fusili, who apparently doesn't realize he's in a TV show, yet they still manage to get him to pose for, the, for an intro. Yeah, that makes sense. And random pictures, including this terrifying sight. <laughs> Looks like the Asian from Lilo and Stitch. And did they really have to take a picture of the alien on the toilet? Like, it seems a bit invasive. And all Prick gets is this little thrown together graphic at the end. No effort was put into this. So we start off, and off the bat, this guy knocks on our door. Jimmy the Neck, he's called. Which is ironic, considering a neck is the one thing he doesn't have. This guy is so persistent, like he just won't stop knocking. Leave me alone, you stalker. Stop. G go away. He just keeps saying the same thing. Okay, fine, I'm coming. Oh, never mind, I'm stuck. How do doors work? So, Jimmy the Chin is suspicious of me, seeing as he believes I've stolen a briefcase from him. Oh my god, you know what? I may not have stolen it, but I I'll give you mine. Please never look at me like that again. But now he won't leave, and I'm stuck here until, of course, we intimidate him. How the hell am I meant to intimidate this guy? Look at me. Look at that flexing. Who is intimidated by that? Even so, he does seemingly get intimidated by annoying him. Though sometimes he gets pretty mad and fights back. Not quite sure what he's trying to say here. I don't know, prob probably something to that extent. Still, with enough annoying, I have now intimidated Jimmy the jawline. I know you didn't take the briefcase, I just plain lost it. Oh yeah, that, that makes up for the PTSD you caused me. So, Jimmy the neckbeard works for Frankie, and some guy gave him a briefcase to deliver to him. 
Some guy. Do you really want to be delivering a briefcase to your mob boss if you don't even know who the guy is? Oh, and he also gave him a parcel of, uh, things. Okay, now this is really suspicious. You are terrible at your job, Jimmy the Eyeball. I gotta get him the briefcase. Can you help me find it? Great! Wait, wait, what? I, I didn't say anything. I didn't agree to this. So now we have a few things to do. Most importantly, we have to find the briefcase for Jimmy the Nose Hair. Look for clues and talk to Frankie. We also have a hidden want, because this town just can't function without my help. Well, first off, we'll go see Frankie because he's actually our neighbor. And look at this house. Is this even a house or is it a bunker? It looks real nice though. He even has an aquarium downstairs and is just watching his pet shark, I guess. I'm sure we've all had a pet shark at some point in our lives. He seems nice. Apparently, we're already friends. Even so, he will only agree to let me help if I cheer up his daughter. Apparently, that'll make him gain his trust. Though I feel talking to the mob boss's daughter isn't the best way to make friends with him. Anyway, here she is. Isn't she beautiful? Be honest with me, prick. You think I dress funny, huh? It's okay, you can say it. No, wait, forget it, okay? That was a very uncomfortable and one-sided inter interaction. So now we go off while picking up these things off the ground some more, which I soon will be able to explain what they're for. Then we go into the pawn shop, go back here, where I'm sure is employee only, and there's just this big pile of sand lying here. Is, is anyone gonna clean this up? Oh well, may as well ring the bell they have in here for some reason. This guy definitely does not look like he enjoys his life. And can you blame him? He works in retail, and I've just set up a giant bell that's gonna pierce his ears for the rest of his shift. Enter the saloon, and there's another big pile of sand. How come there's only sand in these specific parts? Anyways, Dusty can't help because he can't open the saloon's freezer. Great excuse. So, let's do it for him. Oh, uh, okay, maybe not. But we have new areas to explore. Here we have the nuclear power plant. Always a great thing to have in a city. Oh, look! Prick gets to relive his past trauma. The worst part about this place are these things. They make this sound every time you go near them, and it just doesn't stop. And there's two of them. It just doubles up. The sound, it's so annoying. Just, just stop, please, I beg you. Oh my god, oh, that, that, is, that is so much better, thank you. But let's talk to this shady guy standing here. And when we do, we can sell the things that we've picked up off the ground. This is one of the ways we can get money. I don't know why he wants this stuff or what he's planning to do with them, but... Hey, I get paid, so who cares if he's building a nuclear bomb? But before we all get nuked, let's visit the zoo. They have a nuclear ward in here for some reason too. Though the real star attraction is this right here. A minigame. This is Bigfoot Love Chickens. No, not Bigfoot loves chickens, love chickens. D did anyone proofread this? This is similar to the commercial games, but here you can play them whenever you want, and still learn money from them. In this game, you need to match the chickens to the white collar combination that Bigfoot wants. So they can all leap into his mouth, and he can eat and devour them all. I've just witnessed four chickens get brutally murdered, and after that, I have to watch this guy just rubbing his stomach like, oh, he's so pleased with himself. Stop it! This minigame is far darker than it first appears. But I do get 142 simoleons, so it was worth it. Everything's worth it if you get money for it afterwards. If we talk to the zookeeper though, we can see we can ask for an errand. So we need to return a drain plug to Kaylee, which this guy borrowed. Why did you need to borrow a drain plug? So we go back to the unbearably loud nuclear plant. Oh, oh. Oh, thank god it's over again. And we go give this drain plug back to Kaylee. But first, I want to point out that if I walk down here, she's somehow on top of me. What is happening here? When I go back up, I'm on a top layer, and when I go back down... Da is this world even real? The dam's drain plug. I forgot Sancho borrowed it. I better plug the, the dam's drain before we lose half the power in this city. Okay then, why the hell would you let him borrow it if it's that Plumbing. important? Oh yeah, w w why not go into a hospital and say to the nurse, do you mind if I borrow a plug? And they just pull out the patient's life support and it's like, here you go, don't wash back now. Well, after saving the town, we're off to the casino to play Kel Keelhole and Cards or something. I have, I have no idea if I said that right. This one always confused me. Like, I remember playing this a lot, but I couldn't figure out what, I was even, what was even happening. As far as I know, you have to match three of the same cards and have them walk the plank. 
Great, more murder, awesome. But sometimes you can have a ghost card to walk the plank too. Sometimes. I, I don't know when, I don't know why. Anyways, you have to get like 200 points first in order to win. Son of a bitch, I gave away the card of the lady and the next one was the same card. I would have had three. Sometimes you just get stuck in this loop of just swapping cards and it never seems to end. But hey, I won. That's all that matters in life. Well, besides for money. So that was cool. But also in this casino, we have a bedroom. We don't need to pay or anything. Like, we, need, we can just walk in and sleep in this hotel room. While this creepy guy watches us sleep. You know, I, I, I shouldn't really call him creepy. I mean... I'm the one who came in, like this is probably his room. This is why you don't need to buy a bed, you, you just have one here. But as we go go out, we can now talk to our. No prick, don't even start with me alright. Uh, uh, okay, I, I was just trying to talk, why are you getting so aggressive? So I was in a bad mood, clearly. So instead of striking a conversation, we're gonna strike a conversation. Guys, do you have to stand in the middle of the road for this? One of a car comes and kills you both. So, like with Dusty, we make friends by dancing back and forth. Although, sometimes she doesn't like it. She clearly doesn't understand good en entertainment. I'm bored, bored, bored. Um, excuse me, did I not just entertain you? So, Awa wants to get into the casino, but this guy here has been hired to stop her from going in. So, we need to find something to distract him. Though, by the looks of things, he's already distracted by this cactus. So, to distract him, we need to go into the pawn shop and buy this paddle ball for... 250! What kind of paddle ball costs $250 to buy? Is this some kind of special limited edition paddle ball? Why is this so much money? Even the bloody kitchen sink doesn't cost as much! How the hell does a kitchen sink cost less than a ball tied to a string on a piece of wood? Well, we buy it anyway, because that's how the economy works. And we give it to Giuseppe. He clearly is very easily entertained. See, I bet he'd like my dance. So with him distracted, Awa can now sneak into the casino. And the music gets intense when she does. Now we seem to be on good terms with Awa, so much so she decides to walk through me. It's a bit rude. And now we head back to Frankie. Ah, uh, we just hung out by the nuclear plant to look for glowing lizards. Hold on. If you're going to lie, don't make the lie worse than the thing you're lying about. I'd much rather my daughter go to a casino than get Loving. radiation poisoning. So apparently in the briefcase are photographs of a sensitive nature. It shows him holding a copy of Brink. You wouldn't want to be caught dead with that. But as soon as we leave, we have another commercial to do. This time is for a car. Just a car commercial. No idea what make the car is, it's just any old car. So in this minigame, we have to drive around in this car and pay attention to the slogans at the top to understand what to do in the game. So when it says fast, you speed up. When it says terrain vehicle, you go off the world, which I'm sure is illegal. You also have deers you can knock down over. Like, how is this gonna sell a car? I mean, these guys must not have much experience in marketing. It's fast. Yes, most cars are. Easy handling. Like, you're just saying buzzwords and trying to sell a car with it. And all I get from it was $120. I got more by feeding Bigfoot. So now we go to- oh, uh, never mind, Prick is hungry. Sorry Jimmy, you'll have to wait. So we go eat, and- oh for the love of god. The first time I use the bloody thing, it breaks. What kind of useless fridge is this? And look how long it takes to fix it. It probably took longer to fix than the amount of time that I, I had before it broke. So finally we can talk to Jimmy the fingernail, and he realizes that he was burying something. How do you forget that? So I need to go into the desert and dig up the briefcase, in which he gives me a shovel to do so. And off to the desert, which is conveniently just outside my house, where we also see more nuclear wards and alien spaceship parts. Nothing unusual here, but more important is this guy standing on this pirate ship for some reason. When you talk to him, you can buy books from him. These are used to improve your skills. Apparently, reading a book is enough to improve your skill skill set. Who knew? So I get one for mechanical, so I can fix that fridge for Dusty, and confidence, which means I, I'm better at annoying people. So now we have to dig these parts of sand, 
that for some reason are all different from the rest of the sand. I'd say it's because they've been dug up, but when I dig them up again, they go back to normal. What kind of sand is this? Well, we found the briefcase, and now we go back to gym. Actually, I'm thirsty, so I'm gonna have a drink first. And my fridge didn't break this time, yay! Okay, now... We go off and fix Dusty's freezer. I I'll get to you eventually, Jimmy the Elbow Sweat. Now we can fix Dusty's freezer, which has nothing in it but a couple of boxes. Okay, why did he need to get in here so badly? I'm just gonna leave the door open too and just let everything defrost. Now we talk to Jimmy. What's going on? I haven't seen you for hours, days, months even. Dude, I talked to you like five minutes ago. The desert wasn't that far away, it's just outside my house. So now we've given them back the briefcase. He gives me an old family heirloom, which is a water cannon. An interesting heirloom. And with that, we beat the episode. And after every episode, we're judged by the Goth family. I don't think the wife liked the episode very much. So much so, she wants to kill me, apparently. And now we're back to the menu. We're gonna go by the rude gesture. And then I'm gonna end the episode here. So yeah, if you want to see more of this game, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.